G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode. So this week I'm gonna get into the dinghy davits. So it might be a bit of a complicated one, but you might see I've already started because I really didn't know how I was gonna go with this, but solar panels I'm looking at are nearly two meters long. So that's two meters. And having two of them will have a width of two meters as well. So that's basically two meter square box that we're gonna put on top of here. I wasn't quite sure about the height. I stuck these on to sort of get a bit of a estimation and I thought I'd have to trim a bit off. And it looks like I will because I think, yeah, I don't like how tall these stick up. So we want the boat to look as nice as possible. But if I sort of outstretch myself here, um, you can see how hot, much higher they are. Let's step back a little bit more. So much higher than my head. Um, so they don't need to be that high. I'm probably one of the tallest people that will be on my boat realistically. So I want to reduce that, but I didn't know how much by until I've started a few contraptions. So put a little platform down there as a bit of a swim deck example. And then I made up this piece of wood and then just impressed uh, a G clamp to do it so it can't fall off. And that's nice and rigid. I can move that to any angle now and it'll just stay there so this is the shape of the dinghy davit system uh, it won't be anchored here it will be anchored on the front and be flush with this pole but this gives me a bit of an idea on height so i've got it set up so that obviously that'll be parallel i can reduce that height by about so far about 100 mil which will make me feel a bit better about the height. So we'll go downstairs and I'll show you what I mean by um, the distances required. All right, I put this little uh, contraption here up here just to represent what the swim deck might be. You've got these plates welded on here um, and then you got a swim deck will be a fold down swim deck. And the water line sits about here on the boat so this is all out of the water that whole section going up the back of the boat is all out of the water so it's actually really long distance to get down from up the top onto the swim platform and into the dinghy the reason why the swim platform will have to be there is because that's got a negative rake down there and a positive rake up there so you've got to sort of step over that little ridge and then climb down a negative rank rake and then while on a ladder jump into the dinghy that's not going to be very stable it's not going to be practical so what we're going to have to do is when we lower the swim the, the dinghy down the swim platform will have to be lowered down as well giving us uh, like a ladder to come down on and stand on the swim deck and then jump to the dinghy uh, otherwise we'd have to just have a dinghy that sits there and it's lowered vertically straight down but you're still going to have that massive encumbrance of a problem of going from the top down a ladder and then jump into a dinghy um, it's not going to be very stable so yeah i want to have the swim platform available so you could just come down the swim platform you know load things in and out of the dinghy if you're shopping or whatever um, and it's going to be a nice stable swim platform to stand on and then just hop down into the dinghy from there so we need to be able to design the dinghy davits so that they come down but past the swim platform so i've set that up that's my example of a swim platform 800 uh, mil wide so not quite a meter but i believe that's going to be enough of a platform to get in and out and do what we need to do efficiently so here I've got the dinghy davit um, and that's just over a meter from the, that point to the edge of the uh, swim platform. And your average dinghy, your inflatable dinghy, say three meter long one, uh, the overall widths of them is about 700 mil. And that will give me like a little bit of clearance from the edge of the dinghy to the uh, swim platform so i've been down here for a couple of hours now just trying to figure all that out um i think 
after many trials and errors and adjustments, I'm happy with the sizing. So it's now a matter of me trying to put it all together. So for today, I'm just going to try and get the these posts the right height and start construction on the solar arch. I'm going to try and make the bracket there for this piece here, the, the actual um, swing arm. I'm going to make the bracket for that, but we'll make the swing arm another time. Um, that doesn't have to be done now, but we need all the hot works that will be done here done so we can start painting the boat properly. So yeah, finish these off, finish the uh, solar arch on the top and do a bracket for the actual swing arm. So let's get started. another day and the sun's just come up and I've marked out where I'm gonna cut these so I'm taking a, a fair good chunk off of this height I want it to be a bit lower it saves a bit of weight um, it all is a bit stronger that way and I gotta get into cutting real quick because I got my brother gonna come down to help me lift the solar arch um, all complete put it on top and I'm gonna tack it on with his help because it's just too hard to lift that massive thing up one-handed and then weld with the other hand it's not going to work for me so got my brother down to give me a hand so quickly cut this um, solar arch is a little bit wider than this so I need to make something that's going to go from this ID inside diameter to the OD outside diameter of the um, solar arch so I've got a couple of hours to get all that done so I'm going to get straight into it Well, that was a lot harder than I thought because as I was cutting all the time the sun was in my eyes I couldn't exactly see what I was doing and you know there's an open edge right there so I sort of felt a little bit more comfortable being up at the right height and, and cutting it uh, and then this thing has a bit of a, a cage that you could sit in and then I just use these G clamps to clamp it down so it like, helped it a little bit so very difficult, took a bit longer than I hoped. So I uh, better get on to the next task, which is making some cups to sit on top. Um, we need the inside of that to be sealed so that we don't get corrosion. Um, and we also need a little platform for the uh, solar arch to sit on. 
So that's the next task. So this is the material I've used for the solar arch, um, for the uprights. It's a, uh, what, three mil wall thickness. It's gonna hold a bit of weight on the top and you know, it's gonna take some wind battering. So it had to be reasonably strong. So the, what I need to do is make a, a top that goes on, on top. However, the solar arch is slightly wider than this. So I need to, when I weld the top on, it needs to come out so that the solar arch can sit on top and be welded on both sides. I've got, what I've got laying around is like, this is a five mil by 50 mil bar. This is 16 mil by uh, 75 mil bar. Way too overkill. I've got six mil plate. Uh, that looks a bit more than six mil. So, no, that is six mil plate. So I reckon this will be strong enough. So I'm gonna cut out a couple of sections and then take them up there and weld them on top. And yeah, they're gonna come out so that the solar arch can sit on top. All right, so my brother's been over and he's helped me lift the solar arch up onto the, the post. So this is what we're looking at. I've got all my tools out, so it's still pretty messy. So we've got uh, these little six mil plate that comes off the top that seals the rain from getting down to, to this tube and corroding it out. But yeah, that's all welded all the way around. Um, we've got welds across here, down the sides, welds on the top. Um, so it's all looking pretty strong. So it, it's a, like, it's not too bad, but if I wobble it around, you can see that maybe if I wobble it here, it does has a, a little bit of uh, wobbling around. So to counteract that, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna be putting a 45 from he about here up to this pose. That's why I've put that cross brace in there. Is that, uh, yeah, we're gonna put uh, yeah, post going up across here as putting uh, all the main weight uh, that is hanging over the back of the boat it's going to be transferred the weight's going to be transferred into this giant post here so that will rigid it all up a bit and make it all nice and sturdy we're going to have two solar panels on this uh, each solar panel weighs about 20 kilos at the most so we've got 20 20 40 kilos um, you know, I may even end up putting a radar on the back there, but I doubt it, it might go on the mast over there. But say, let's say if there's 60 kilos on here, um, we need to be able to withstand that 60 kilos being moved against the slapping of the boat going up and down. And you know, you're gonna have 50 plus knot winds blowing against this at the worst case scenario. So we want this to be as strong as possible. So it uh, won't hurt to have another cross brace putting all the weight that's hanging off the back of the boat back into this post and then that gets transferred down into the boat. Uh, so yeah, still a little bit of work to do, but uh, I'll keep pushing forward. So I quickly smashed up a couple of these guys. So um, it's got this little nook in the steel there and we'll go up and I'll show you what we mean, but that's basically the wedge there. Okay, so you can see I've notched it out so that that little piece there can fit into that and we've got a nice little wedge shape there. So that's basically going to be taking force from two directions and dispersing it through this post here. So we're just going to get that welded on and that'll uh, help support all that weight that's uh, towering off the back there.
pretty happy with the progress so we've got the side supports up there like the lateral supports and that's really taken heaps of weight um, that was going to be like hanging over the boat and bring it back into this beam so it's really happy with that um, it's come up pretty well so it's really like I can, can't even move it anymore put heap I could swing on that but um, it's not moving back and forth or up and down so I'm pretty happy with how strong that is now and like I'm 90 kilo fella and I can hang off that and not get any any movement out of that um, like this way um, and we have to put up there uh, what 40 50 maybe 60 kilos so if it can hang off my weight and not have any movement I'm pretty happy with that so I've got that one in there as well um, so then I've, I've done a full weld all around the bottom now and the last thing to do is I've already made them up I've got these lugs here two of them um, and these are what's going to be the pivot point uh, for the dinghy davit um, so as you can sort of see a mock-up of, of that particular um, piece of wood there and uh, that's going to go up and down with a dinghy attached so that'll lower into the water but obviously it has to pivot on something uh, we can't leave the g-clamp on it so I'm gonna weld these either side not sure if you can see because of the shadowing but put a full weld all the way around that but first I want to drill a hole in here uh, for the actual pin to, uh, to pivot the, um, the, the bar uh, it's going to be a lot easier if I drill that now than having to crouch off the side of the boat here and having to drill you know, a massive M10 or M16 hole so I'll get those drilled up and then weld these on and that's the last task I reckon because everything else is sort of on and done um, not going to worry about building this thing just yet because I could build that off the boat this is more to finish off all the hot works at the back of the boat here so that uh, we can get to properly undercoating this and making it start to look pretty on the outside. So let me drill these holes so we can get them all welded on. about to weld it on this is what we're looking at nice chamfered drill hole and uh, that's gonna be the pivot point for the dinghy davits so let's get it welded on I finished the solar arch done a bit of a clean up so uh, I'm not tripping over anything so that's really sturdy now if I hang on that it doesn't it doesn't wobble whatsoever it's so strong now um, and that's what I wanted um, that's why I got the, the slightly thicker steel uh, all up this probably weighs I'd say about 100 kilo for the whole lot um, it's got a support yeah 40 kilos like i said before possibly up to 60 kilos but with the the wind gusting on it you know that that force factor is multiplied so that's why we put these on um yeah but they have really made it so strong 
Uh, it's got a little bit of lateral movement, um, which I've got to fix up. Um, but yeah, like I said before, uh, once this is welded on here and one there, and then also we're going to weld on a bar that comes up from here, goes all the way across and down. And same to this one here, uh, all the way up, across and down. And then we're going to have a another roof uh, for this aft deck area. And then we, with the bars coming up across here, we can also make the bars go up and and attached to this as well, which shores it all up in more directions and makes it a bit more sturdy. And if I'm still not happy with how, like the, the lateral movement side to side, I've got these chain plates that won't be used. I can, that's 15 mil thick. I can weld a bar onto that, come up and, and just shoot that foot up a bit. So we got options to make that even sturdier, back and forth, strong as, happy, but um, yeah, we've got a little bit of work to do. Um, got these lugs welded on, which will be for the dinghy davit itself. It's this little thing here, which will be made out of stainless steel. Uh, and that just goes down, picks the dinghy up, raises it up. Gonna have to put a winch on one of these sides, uh, but that's, that's for a later day. We're all just getting this finalized so we can put the undercoat on here. So I'm happy with that. Um, next week I'm either going to be prepping this aft deck here to put its proper uh, undercoat on. Um, so I've got to sand all this uh, tie coat, um, this, this is just like a hold coat that I put on, sand this all back, um, get it prepped ready for paint uh, and then give it a proper undercoat. Um, I do have to get these sorted soon, I might look into doing that maybe as well because I need to get these uh, blasted or, or um, like prepped, painted and put inside because it takes up a lot of room out the back here. I'd like this back deck to be clean um, and then we've got also somewhere to sit down inside. I've got to put the uh, coach roof windows in so I can get this tarp off uh, don't have, so I don't have to worry about the water getting in. We've got to put the mast step on which will be just at the front of the coach roof and then right at the front of the boat, we got the bowsprit um, to finish off. I've got the material for that now. That came in last week, um, so I can go on with that. Um, and obviously, we've got all the hand railing to finish. Like these are all just tacked in. You can see there's no weld on that. It's just tacked. Um, so it'd be nice to finish all this hand railing off. We've got a little bit, some little pieces to make. We're missing some of the hand rail over here. I've got to make that section. But yeah, uh, the, the outside of the boat is really looking, starting to look complete anyway. Uh, one other big job I've got is to run all the lines for the deck. Um, so wherever like I'm going to be running my rigging, I've got to weld on little studs um, so we can bolt down all the, all the rigging um, and deck hardware. Um, and that's about it. We won't have time to fare the boat this summer. Um, so by the time I've finished all those jobs I just spoke about, um, the, the weather's going to start turning bad and we'll probably end up going inside the, the boat at that point and doing more work in internal of the boat. I've, I've still been purchasing heaps of stuff so I can continue on with working inside. But yeah, um, we're take, making the use of this nice weather that we've got at the moment. So happy with that. I'll go down and show you a picture of it from below and um, yeah we'll leave it there and we'll uh, show you the credits and uh, hopefully we see everyone in a couple of weeks and leave a comment let me know how I'm doing. Um, one thing that I should mention though before I disappear is that this all this just cost me 300 bucks in or 300 Australian dollars so like US that's like 140 dollars. Um, yeah, this is just like what 70 bucks for those uprights and all this steel was about 150 bucks um, and a couple other little bits and pieces so like it's not the fanciest uh, solar arch in the world but like it's not aluminium it's not stainless steel it'll do the job but it only costs like under 300 bucks so happy with that got to keep resources smart um, once it's uh, got a paint job, it's going to look pretty, pretty nice. 
um, and then the stainless steel, um, like uh, I don't know what you're going to call that, but the bit that go the the davit that actually goes down and holds the the dinghy, that's obviously going to be stainless steel. But yeah, I'm happy. Saved a lot of money doing it this way. Uh, it took a little bit of time, but yeah, pretty happy. So have a look what it looks like from the ground, and see you in a fortnight. Thanks, guys.